What's up everybody, it's the chair bringing you another full patch review, helping you to understand the changes and how they will affect the meta game. We have a new patch today, patch 0.5.1, finally the bounce patch we're all waiting for, nerfs Quang and some mage items, as well as giving some buffs to Decker and Sparrow. Definitely could be an interesting take on how the game plays out, and yeah, let's just get into it. So kicking off this patch, we got some fat content. We got the new avatars, Decker and Grimm. You know, I think this might be Decker's T1 skin, right? Maybe this one is Grimm's as well. So remember they're based off the skins that are coming after the season pass eventually. That's pretty cool. Excited to see those when they come. Uh, apparently the devs putting a lot of work into making those really well good and working with like some specific artists and stuff. So hopefully they come out really well. Uh, gameplay. I added the sound effects when enemy heroes revealed by wards. Uh, a lot of people asking for this change. Personally, I'm not too big on it. I think it's fine. Um, I think checking the mini-map should be a skill that you focus on, uh, and this kind of lowers that skill floor quite a bit, because now you get, you know, pings when, when wards see things, but I guess there's no big map and no ability to blow it up, so it is a bit harder, I guess, than in other games because of the perspective to have strong map awareness, so, so I can understand why the change came through. Uh, not really a big deal to me, but some people really like this. Yeah, it just helps helps you with your map awareness for sure. Uh, Boris added sound effects, indicate energy is acquired. This is good. I think there already was a small sound, but it wasn't very noticeable. <laughs> and it was very, very easy to just like miss the canisters on the floor. At least when I used to play Boris, uh, there was a lot of times I would be jungling and the pickup range was so small that I would just not notice the canisters. There's no real sound when you pick it up. I think there's actually a sound when you get 25, but there was no sound when you get it. So this will just make Boris a bit easier to play, help people understand it a little bit easier. Grim, not EXE, really like this change. Projectiles and energy troop will now change color based on his mode. Uh, I found seeing the gun very difficult. Really glad that they added this quality of life, just helping you notice which stance you're in a bit more effectively. It was definitely really annoying not being sure what you were in sometimes um, until you press Q, basically, because uh, fights can be really chaotic. So just having yeah more ability to see what stance you're in will help you make better decisions based on the moment and you know be able to switch to the stance that you want if you do want to change. Huge change in the patch here. Login screen music and I'll play the correct volume you saved. Really tired of getting my ears blown out. So that's pretty nice. Uh, daily challenges now reset to correctly. A lot of people like this. Uh, items, Warlock's Aegis slows will properly break the spell shield now. Uh, I don't know what this means, <laughs> to be honest. Um, it might be fixing the bug where slows were penetrating uh, Warlock's Aegis. I feel like that's a bug where, for example, let's say Gideon has his passive up and he uses Q on you. His Q will break the spell shield and slow you, even though it doesn't do damage, which could also trigger him actually using his passive, which is, you know, kind of annoying. This, it sounds like that's what this is fixing. Like, let's say you press his R and B on you, you won't get slowed, but it will break the shield consistently. I'm not sure. I don't know how many instances of slow there are that don't do damage. I guess what I can think of is Decker. Maybe this is fixing it so Decker E, the initial slow wasn't breaking the shield. So maybe it's not fixing the bug I'm talking about and that's still present in the game. I don't really like the fact that slows go through Aegis right now. I'm fine with them breaking the spell shield, but I'd, I'd like to take them a little I'd like to see take another look at this and fix that interaction because I think it's really annoying that you can get CC'd through Aegis by a spell that didn't really hit you, you know, so we'll see. Uh, this is really good. Cast times is delayed. We implement a new animation system to have gameplay effects line up better with their respective animations. Most abilities are unaffected while some prove challenging and buggy. While we're still working on Boris's E, having an untouched cast delay, all of them have fixed and improved. So if you've been playing this patch, you would have noticed that a lot of abilities have had serious delay issues. The big ones I can think of as like Gideon all, all of Bellica's kit, <laughs> uh, Steel's Q, it's just been Muriel's Q. There's been quite a few that have been like really, really broken. Just huge delays on usage. Uh, so glad this is coming out as soon as possible because they're making all these characters, especially Bellica just felt really, really awful. Her ult was like, Ugh, and it was like a two second channel or something just to actually press her ult. Super, super obnoxious. So glad to see they've already fixed it because it's making the game really awkward for a lot of characters. Boris trying to move when tethered, no longer with the animation dragon, so it's causing it to fly away. I've definitely seen this. It's hilarious. Glad that it's gone though because it's very, very hard to like understand what's happening. Uh, they fixed Gideon's auto attack animation. If you're a mid player, you would have witnessed this. Very, very annoying. Dude just stands still and lasers are flying out of him. So glad to see this is already taken care of. Fixed an issue is causing his shield to block out his feast ability. I've definitely blocked it, but I've still been stunned. But that's an issue that Aegis has as well. So I'm not sure this is a Countess bug fix, which is a Grim bug fix, because if Countess ult to you while you have ages, it's pretty common that you get stunned there as well, but maybe it's been fixed across the board. But I've definitely had this happen where I've right clicked and, and been stunned by Countess. I haven't taken the damage, so I'm not sure what the interaction's big fixed here is, but you know, if it's a bug, it's a bug, it's a good. Uh, Kai, I fixed an animation issue with ultimate causing the suppress out, so it'll work properly. I think I've seen this. Kai's ultimately not doing anything, so um, I think uh, it's, it's pretty good. Uh, probably really good for Kai. Just he, this, char this character needs, needs consistency because he's really just a handshake character. Like everything he does, he has to like commit to do it. So anything that's affecting your ability to make decisions, like making them more risky because something might not work, makes this character a lot worse. So I'm glad to see that they've already kind of like fixed that this kind of thing because yeah, he really is like a, a you know, is a, a zero or one hundred kind of hero. Like you're either going in. 
in fighting or you're not engaging and you need to be able to have full consistency on stuff like this so yeah making his ultimate work properly is really good for him and probably like a little bit of a significant buff maybe depending on how bad the bug was before i'm not sure i don't play kai at all i actually never played a single game uh miru alacrity rmb fixed issues cause it give decaying move speed until it's a flat amount i've actually felt this now that i thought about think about it i didn't realize it was decaying until i, I read it but i definitely have noticed it's decaying so it's actually quite a big buff to miru to be honest which she definitely doesn't need so this could be pushing her over the top and maybe we'll, we might get some nerfs in the next patch or two you never know if it's bugged it's bugged it's not her fault but uh this might be what really puts her into like super super god s tier she's already kind of like in like demigod s tier so she might make her way up uh jungle melee minions go to christian 28 to 35 this change is already actually in patch 5.0 uh feels pretty good for jungle from what i understand it feels really good for mid because you just walk in and you want the camps and now you get more gold small change gives jungle a bit more gold in the ecosystem uh they were definitely struggling since the rework to jungle which made a static camps so they definitely lost a lot of gold so just a little bit of extra drip for them but mainly as mid players you know we we like to steal those camps and get rich so it works for us uh raptor now has 30 percent physical armor penetration just making raptor do a bit more damage uh definitely was very easy to take and it felt like you took almost no damage even as like a mid or something so this would probably mean that you have to have your jungle or solo and tank it now which i think is fine it's probably how it should be uh, realistically you shouldn't be able to solo it or tank it as like a, a mid or an ad it seems maybe an ad with life steal but just basically making it so yeah it's, it's a bit of more of a team objective than it is right now uh, stealth emblem cooldown increased from 270 to 300 ward duration decreased from 90 to 120 uh this is really strong for early laning actually it's a big buff to your initial ward and a big nerf to your timing on your second ward but overall i'd say it makes early laning a lot safer especially with pinging wards now you can basically control the entire red buff of the jungle because I'm, I'm pretty sure red lost two minutes so you can actually just essentially ward off their entire red buff and they'll be getting a single red gank so it's actually kind of scary for jungle i'd say because you know if, if mid ward stairs and you know dual lane wards the or solo lane wards the the other stairs and the other side of red jungle there's pretty much no way you can get into either of those lanes during a red buff duration except by running through vision unless <laughs> you're playing around radiant pulse which has been buffed from six to ten seconds this is a good change it was actually really tight to kill a ward even some characters they could even like if, if you if you radiant pulse a ward and then you went to hit it but you started like two seconds late you just couldn't kill it so this is a really nice change for radiant pulse might make it a bit more uh, accessible for people i think definitely this change makes it so junglers will have to look at radiant pulse a lot more you definitely will need counter to vision now if you want to get early gang stuff especially with red and you need to control vision a lot better i think this is always good increasing the vision meta game and like how it's played but uh, with the combination of the increased award duration of the early game and the pinging wards i think it'd be a lot more reliant on junglers knowing about countering vision and taking radiant pulse and using it properly to be able to find early gang especially with red buff it might even push junglers out of a red buff clear entirely to be honest you might want to delay your red buff because now let's say you start blue right and you do your blue jungle you get level three and then you go red do your red you'll have two minutes where everybody's wards are kind of down because the the second ward comes up later so you'd have like two minutes of your red where you could actually gank and you'd have higher levels because you, you could be pretty confident they don't have vision anymore but that might actually be the way the jungle goes because i think it, it might be quite awkward now to start red and just kind of waste your buff duration it would feel pretty bad so there could be a world where the jungle meta shifts entirely based off these changes and uh goes towards a like a blue star farming kind of path and then tries to gank with like level four or five with red rather than ganking at level two or three We'll have to see how it plays out, but that would be something that I could see happening just because it will feel, I think, unless you're really good with gradient pulse and you find the wards and stuff, it'll be really difficult, I think, to find ganks in the early game against seasoned players. Definitely something to consider. Could be a complete shakeup in jungle pathing here entirely. Uh, Warlock Swears, energy penetration per favor reduced. Kind of sad, I already feel like Wears aren't that good, but I understand the change, I guess, if you want to lower Mage's late game damage output. Mana Lens getting nerfed here as well. Energy power reduced from 80 to 65. Favor scaling change from one energy power per favor to 25 mana per favor. It's actually quite a big knock on Mana Lens's damage in general. I still think you have to rush it, but I guess they're trying to remove the identity from it as a big damage item and instead make it kind of the utility choice between the mana it gives and uh, the cooldown it gives. So you're not buying it for big damage now, you're buying it to sustain your early game and keep relevant uh, and throughout the game in terms of like uh it gives you good early laning stats right and through the early part of the game I actually think this change is kind of nice uh, overall. It might actually make mana lands feel quite a bit better because late game mana is actually quite problematic. And now instead of getting 28 EP, which of course is really nice, you're instead getting, you know, like 500 mana. Like that's pretty significant actually. That's a pretty significant portion. Obviously you're getting less damage. I mean, 500 mana is still uh, 10, you know, energy power on uh, mana lands basically because of the passive. So essentially you can look at this as instead of getting one energy power, right? You're getting 0.5 energy power and 25 mana. So overall, actually the favor scaling change sounds kind of good to me. I feel like I'd rather have more mana in the, in the late game right now and this sounds pretty nice actually in regards to how it affects your mana bar and things like magician and stuff like that so overall i don't actually think i dislike this change that much it, it pulls back power a bit but it gives you a bit more sustainability in the late game which
which I think is a change that overall I, I'd appreciate. Energy cell. Energy power increased from 18 to 20. Cost increased from 700 to 750 to 800. So same with mana matrix here, plus 2 EP, plus 50 gold. They're basically just hitting the, the early back timings, I guess, in mid here a little bit. It costs a little bit more to base now. You need 1300 to get mana matrix. You need 500 to get energy cell from the crystal star. Wait, 450, I guess. You need 450 from the energy cell. So just a little bit of a knock on, on early mage spikings. I, I just don't like this angle again. This reminds me when they buff mana lens. It feels like they're tackling the problem in the opposite direction of what I'd like to see. I'd rather see easier early spikes than making the spikes feel like they take longer because it's already a very long time to get mana matrix. It's already a very long time to go from mana matrix to the mana lens. The mana lens spike was too strong. I don't think anybody's disagreeing with that. But I think this angle just feels a bit weird. They keep telling me, or at least when I've spoken to devs, it's like, oh, we've got more mage items coming. It's going to make the early game better. But it's not there right now, you know? So I think this is going to make mid feel a little bit more awkward, especially if you like you buy this and you can't really wave clear still. I think most characters would be fine, but hitting early energy power is like an issue because it slows down the speed of mages entirely. They don't farm after the first item as well, which slows them down from getting their second item, which slows them down from getting the third item. You know, it affects their whole pacing of the game. It, it worries me a little bit. I don't think it's big enough that it will actually feel super bad, but uh, I don't like this idea of like, oh, now I need an extra wave to get mana matrix. You know, it already feels like it was a lot of farm to kind of get going, uh, and now that's kind of increased. So it could feel really bad. I think overall it's mostly okay. The changes aren't too big, but yeah, I, I guess I'm just hoping that the newer items come in soon, or there's like an item pass. So stuff like the way the shop feels now wouldn't be as relevant, right? Because there'll be other choices you can make in the early game that wouldn't make you feel like you have to make these big jumps over and over again. Apocalyptic Epitome, health threshold increases 30% to 40% max health. It's a pretty good buff for the item. Uh, I still don't think you'll build it because of how strong War Rages is. The problem with Apoc Apocalyptic Epitome, not only in the cost, I think it's very, very costly, honestly, for the stats. You have to be getting a lot of value out of the passive to make it worth it. But the other problem with it on top of that is that flat penetration just doesn't really function in a meta game where everybody's building magic resistance. And there's actually changed the jar of hearts of this patch, which also makes it very, very accessible for both junglers and AD carries. So it's very, very easy to pick up magic resist. And flat penetration is just extremely low value as soon as anybody builds any magic resist at all. So if everybody has it very accessible in the meta game, this item will just never be played, especially at the price that it is. Uh, with wares also getting nerfed, you can't even stack as much pen as you'd want to now. So it just feels like this item is just really forced out because of the current state of items as opposed to like its existence itself, if you know what I mean. Like it's not like it's actually a problem. It's just that it can't function when everybody's building War Ages and now everybody can build Jar of Hearts and everybody builds BOTD and everybody builds Miracles. Like every character in the game is building some MRM pretty much every single role except AD Carry previously. But now AD Carry has an item as well, right? With the new Jar that we'll get to later. So it's just like, it's, it's even less valuable. Maybe this passive threshold is enough to make it feel good, but I just can't imagine that you'd ever look at the stats and be like, that's what I want in this game because it's just wasted stats, you know? Flat penetration isn't that valuable as soon as you're not burning them down to like, you know, single digit MR or zero MR and you're doing tree damage. That's the value of flat penetration. So this item just still doesn't really feel accessible. I'd much rather see it get like a lot cheaper so you could build it as an early spike when, you know, you you know they're going to build MR, but you have like this two item window where they haven't got to their MR item yet and you could do tree damage to everybody, you know, and you could like snowball the game. That's what I'd like to see this item become. I don't think this change, I appreciate that they're buffing it because I do think it's really weak right now, but I don't think this change is really what it needs. I think it needs kind of like a small rework to get into the direction of like, this is your big early game snowball item that you build if you're winning and you want to like crush the map and I think that would be a much better identity for it maybe it's harder to balance in that regard but I just think right now it doesn't fit the game at all I guess if War Ages ever gets nerfed to the point where you take a big power loss for taking it I think this item would feel a lot better because you can actually buy it and you'll be doing true damage to mid and you'll be doing true damage to AD carry for a while and it'll actually be more relevant kind of like uh Oblivion Orb in the Legends I guess like when you have that Sork Shoes Oblivion Orb combo you're doing true damage to everybody you build it early when you're on like an assassin or something it makes more sense the problem with this item is just that the cost is like insane and all the magic pen is on the final form rather than the build path so it just doesn't really seem to fit for the reasons i've stated here curse remnant trauma duration increased from three to four cost reduced with the resistance to 2900 yeah fine small buffs i think remnant is actually pretty okay i don't build it very often because it's not too much anti-healing scenarios but i think overall it's fine maybe if jar is getting played more curse remnant makes more sense if miracle starts getting built more i think curse remnant would be okay probably a better item in comp as well because i think miracles will be a lot more pre prevalent in comp games but overall yeah nice quality of life i don't think it's super significant it would change much but sure. I mean, I, it's weird to me that I'm seeing cost decrease on Remnant, which I think is already pretty fine, and then appear to be still, like, kind of struggling, but, <laughs> you know, it is what it is. Uh, King's Castle dash range reduced from 1200 to 1000. Physical power increased to 70 to 75. It's okay. I think this is still long enough for Castle to be relevant. Currently, right now, you kind of build it to deal with Steel, I feel like, with AD Carry. If you're against, like, Steel or Sev, you kind of need King's Castle to just play the game. So, King's Castle Rush has been a little bit prevalent, at least in the EU, for a little bit now, because you just build it, or else you just, you can't function. You literally
literally just can't hit anybody, you just die. So it lets you like, you know, dash to outplay the Steelo or dash away from Severog and you can actually stay present in the team fight. Early buff to physical power is quite nice, makes the item a little bit better stat wise. Because I think the only issue with it was that the stats don't feel great. You feel like you have to build it because of the active, but the stats weren't great. So it does see you get a little bit more damage, that'll make it feel a little bit better. Uh, plasma blade, physical power increase from 40 to 50. So more early game buffs here for ADs actually, because a lot of ADs are building plasma right now. So giving a little bit more early strength and agency to ADs in both of these choices, more physical power. Uh, keen edge, physical power increase to 30 to 31. Life steal increase to 3 to 5. Really big buff for like second recall lady carry. This is the I am the builds into plasma blade. So it's actually really, really, really strong to have 5% life steal instead of 3. Like this actually seems doesn't seem that significant, but it means you stay in lane a lot longer to be honest. Like small life steal is an issue that League of Legends had at the beginning with Doran's blade, where initially it had flat life steal on it and it actually scales really well. So people stay in lane for a really long time. Uh, sustaining poke. Like it doesn't read like much, but especially with Hunter on top, it's actually quite significant in the long run. Probably mean a lot for AD carries early strength. Like all of these changes are very good for early AD carry laning. Photosynthetic symbiote, health regen increase from 0.6 to 1. This is PS. Sure, nice small health regen buff. I think the item um, <laughs> it seems to regen health pretty pretty solidly. So I don't think it was super necessary, but yeah, I mean maybe it was underperforming in stats or whatever, and we'll see how it goes. Uh goblin glue, acidic ammo stacks, increase from four to five percent physical armor shred. You could start seeing goblin glue played. I think goblin glue is actually very good. I think the issue with it is the build path makes no sense. It builds out of an item that gives you attack speed and crit, and then it like loses both of those stats when you finish it. This is basically the black lever of a fault, but with a cool active that grounds. So it sounds very good for like some characters and in some scenarios. I think this item is a little bit underexplored, and maybe this buff will make it a little bit more uh you know appropriate for like maybe like Chimera, Boris, Greystone. Characters like this that are like, you know, physical damage dealers that want to get on somebody and lock them down. Goblin Glue could give them that option, as well as giving them really good stats. It's just again, the build path is really awkward, you know. You end up building attack speed and crit on Kai and being like weirdly squishy, and then you finish it and you get this item that I think seems I think it gives you health and CDR, honestly. And it just comes out of nowhere and it loses all the stats it just had. Like it's it's really weird the build path of this item right now, which I think puts a lot of people off it. But I think overall the completed item is pretty good now, especially with the increase of shred. Because I think it's five stacks, right? So this goes from 20% to 25% shred in total. It's definitely a noticeable difference. So I think this item could definitely see more play. I, I think it's pretty good and kind of unexplored, but yeah, the build path is the big issue with it. Uh, Jar of Hearts. There are limited defensive options with physical power and attack speed items when it comes to mitigating energy damage, and Jar of Hearts provided a good opportunity to provide that choice. So yeah, I was saying this as well on stream a few times in that there's no energy armor options right now that feel good for AD carries or for like offensive. I don't know, like not non mages that wanted to build MR. So I like that they changed Jar of Hearts Identity here to make it a bit more accessible in that regard. I think Jar was like an okay item, but didn't really have a place. It's like, why would I ever build this when I could just build, you know, Plasma Blade or whatever? Like, there was no point in building Jar before, really. Um, price goes from 3000 to 3200, adds 50 energy armor, reduce physical power from 35 to 30, reduce attack speed from 35 to 20, increase lifesteal from 4 to 5, and it still has the active where you build up the charges and you get 40% lifesteal for a short time. So this item actually seems really, really good now. This is what I was talking about earlier when I said the uh, AD carries will have a magic armor option now. If your head is mid, the game is probably going to be a lot harder because everybody could just build Jar of Hearts that couldn't before. Um, it's kind of like that Hex Drinker kind of vibe where it's a good item to build if your AD carry and then mid is getting fed. This item will feel really good. It'll feel good against Severog. It'll feel good, pretty good against Steel. Like 50 energy armor is quite a lot. So this item will feel really, really strong, I think, and it'll make a big impact on the metagame. I think this item will really change a lot. Uh, and I think it's a good direction to take it as well. I think it's cool that they reworked it because I think this one fits a lot better and gives all of builds a lot more options of how to deal with the game that they're playing. So I think it's really good overall. Uh, Exotic Belt is the other builds into Jar of Hearts. Price for 700, 900 and 25 energy armor. Physical power increased and tax be reduced. This is a really good build path now. This item will feel really good to grab early if you're building a jar. You could probably just sit on this for a while even and it would feel fine. Like 25 energy armor is significant enough that it cancels out wares, which is a big thing. Overall, I think, yeah, this item looks really good. Like, both these got went up 200, but I feel like they got so many stats. Like, it lost a bit of attack speed in both times, but here it gained power, here it lost 5 power, and he got 50 energy armor. Like, I feel like this item became really, really cost efficient. Not even including the active that it has, but the active is already really good. It wasn't an issue with the item at all, so I think this item will actually feel really, really good right now. I think uh, if you're ever playing any sort of AD character, you should definitely consider Jar in almost every game, probably, because I think uh, it's, it's going to be really, really strong in the meta. Uh, matter limiter faction change from white to blue. It's actually a really good change. I think it makes it matter limiter a lot more interesting uh, I think yeah, the big issue I had with it was that it was white So it always felt bad to build on mid but now that it's blue. I think it's pretty cool I think it fits better as blue item anyway, but now it gives you scaling with favor That's the big thing. So you're not like wasting a slot on an off-color item That's kind of the issue with uh, building off color is that you feel like you're wasting your favor Especially with how much more favor there is now with raptors and the increased amount of creeps But this won't feel that bad now 
so overall, I think it's uh, definitely an interesting change for some mids. Uh, and you can build as a bit more utility, you know, if you're not aware, Matter Limiter is the item that makes your spells passively slow. So on stuff like Gideon, it's pretty good, actually. It does add a little bit more soft CC to your abilities, um, which is kind of nice. So you're losing damage for it, right? But at least uh, now, it, it, you know, it's in a dungeon mana lens, it's blue. It'll feel a lot better to pick up as a mage if you do feel like you want to go that little bit more supportive route and get it, get it, get like the soft CC and your abilities are like Gideon or I guess like Kwong, maybe? I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't really know who else could buy this right now that it wouldn't feel weird on because Bellica's already stunning them, Kwong is, is tethering them, Gideon is the main thing I think of right now. Uh, cosmic intervention, uh, price decrease from 3,900 to 1,100, energy armor decrease from 38 to 35. This is, uh, I believe, the cleanse, the self cleanse. So making it a bit cheaper. This item's a bit weird. I've never actually seen it built. Um, I think it sounds good, and maybe it's good in some matchups. I was thinking about it maybe as like a counter to Kwong. If Kwong mid was still good, you could build an early cosmic intervention, and you'd win a fight because you would cleanse his tether. But uh, I think overall, it's it's not that good, and it's still not that good. No, it might see a bit more play. Maybe as an early jungler buy to deal with some specific CC in a game. But overall, I don't really see the appeal of it currently and you know it's 1100 delayed from the rest of your build so i mean i guess you could see it as like the quote unquote qss if you need to have a qss tax but i just don't feel like there's a character in the game right now that is like that strong cc wise that you'd feel like you have to build this like it's like i think of like kai i guess this is always so slow that and so short duration that you probably wouldn't feel pressured maybe it's like several I, I don't know i think it's an interesting item but right now it doesn't really have a place and i don't think buffing it will, will give it the attention it needs so uh, but maybe in the future it'll be more relevant when there's stuff to actually cleanse that makes sense uh, aspects clairvoyant item quota reduction increase from 12 to 15 sure uh clairvoyant's like interesting i guess it's a bit better now that the ward duration gets more value with the pings so overall kind of buff i mean cool just making lower used aspects more available uh queen energy power gain per six minion kills reduced from 1.5 to 1 so they buffed queen before then they reworked minions so there was two more minions in every wave and they left queen how it was and it was actually still really 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 strong i think queen will still be the better choice over warlock most of the time but yeah definitely needed to be toned down a bit and was part of the problem with mages getting so strong so quickly if you could farm, you were getting so many free stats just from Queen, so that's pretty insane. Uh, Templar, armor granted to nearby allies increased from 6 or 7%. Templar is kind of a cool idea, but yeah, the stats were kind of, the, the percentage was kind of low. So I guess I think it's nice that buff this a little bit. Pretty cool. Boris, uh, Maul. Leave distance increased from 550 to 650. Percent increased from 75 to 135 to 90 to 150. Boris is definitely feeling weak now. I mean, I think he was always weak. It's just people were very, very bad in the initial patch. So they ended up feeling pressure to nerf him. Um, but now, as you can see, everybody's way more used to Boris, and he does almost nothing in probably like 90 percent of games it's just way too hard to just run into people if they're aware of where you are and also i mean i say it again but the ward change is a really big nerf to boris because all he can do is run at you so if he's trying to gank you from behind right now you get the ping way ahead of time so it would definitely be pretty awkward for him i think energy required to activate each kind of canister reduced from 25 to 20 if 100 energy is present time of activation 20 energy is left over after use jungle buffs now ground 10 energy instead of two i think it's instead of 20 pickup radius increase from 50 to 450 <laughs> such a nice quality of life to you i was trying to tell you earlier about missing things on boris so it's nice that you'll just like suck him in now. But overall, yeah, pretty big buff, honestly. Boris getting four canisters is, like, required for him to play the game, because he pretty much has to, like, unstoppable a CC or he's never going to team fight. So, actually, it's, it's pretty nice quality of life change. Um, he was definitely getting less canisters, I guess, with the smaller camps, maybe, so maybe that's why it makes sense, but the kit is just kind of problematic in itself, because he's basically just a walking stat stick. He either wins the fight or he doesn't. He either gets on you or he doesn't, and it's just, like, there's no real decision making with him, he just runs people and hopes that he's strong enough to beat them. Um, but I, I like that they're trying to push him into making more sense. Honestly, I think it's E is the best part of his kit and having that ability to time a CC cleanse to get a kill. I think that's like one of the most rewarding parts of the kit. And I, I like that they're pushing that a bit more because I think without it, he's pretty much unplayable. So nice that they're giving, I guess, Boris players a bit more opportunity to show their skill. Uh, Decker. Oh, these Decker changes are huge, dude. Uh, Ion Bomb, cast time reduced, and now do damage to minions. In, in mid Decker, I was already experimenting with it, but now I actually think it's genuinely very, very good. I think her biggest problem was that her Q did no damage to minions, unless you like walked halfway back to your tower and then threw it from miles away. Maybe you could blow them up, blow up on the minions, but her wave clear is going to be really, really good now. I think she's super, super playable in mid. Her E radius increases well. Well, super good for team fights, good for wave clear, catching the whole wave with her E, and it was already pretty strong. So, I mean, honestly, I think she's going to be super, super good now, because I think from early levels, you can now just QE the wave, probably around level 5 to 7, and you'll just clear it instantly, kind of like how Quang's been doing. She's a little bit mana intensive in that regard, but if you're just one-shotting the wave, I don't think it will feel bad. Island fence duration from 3 for 5 to 4 5 6. Personally, I felt like it was okay to play with it a bit, but I guess I understand why the duration was increased. I think most people were just using it wrong, where they're just trying to put it on top of a hero with the hero in the middle, and the hero can't run out, but you, you have 
had to kind of use it with like, you have to like catch them with the wall, right? So that's how the, that's where the duration value came from. I guess now it feels a little bit worse to just donk it on a fight and they might try to turn and run and then they still have to stand at the wall for like two, three seconds. But I feel like it was fine before. It was just a higher skill cap. But I mean, I guess I understand why the change was made. Uh, Ion boost is RMB. Horizontal distance travel increased from 600 It's probably feel pretty nice, especially when getting back to lane. It felt kind of weird to RMB when getting somewhere. It didn't feel like it was really worth it. But I think now it'll feel better, especially with the uh, speed increase that you get. Uh, Kai, Berserker Spirit, E, mana cost reduced. Sure. I don't know. I don't play Kai. I imagine this will feel pretty good for early jungling. Just preserve your mana a bit more. I already see Kai is going Affliction Boots, to be honest. So I guess he's not particularly mana reliant. I mean, sure, you know, it can't hurt to lower his mana cost if he's struggling a bit. Uh, Quang nerfs. <sighs> The 80 carries of the world all sighed a big sigh of relief collectively. Uh, energy power scaling now reduced from 60 to 30 on Q, and cooldown now starts when the sword is picked up or Fury of the Heavens is used. This is a really, really big nerf, to be honest. It's a big nerf to how his sword plays, because now every time you do your full combo, your rotation is delayed by like four seconds because of his animation length. So it's definitely going to lower the amount of times he could do a combo, which is going to probably feel a lot better for the enemy team because it's pretty obnoxious. But um, it, it's definitely a very, it, it's a much bigger nerf that it reads, I think. Most people won't recognize that this is probably the biggest nerf he received here. Scaling reduced on E, scaling reduced on R and B with Sword Out, scaling reduced on O. Just damage down across the board. At the same time, tied with itemization nerfs as well, it might be a little bit hard. I think it may be, will be shifted more into off lane now, because it would take a very long time for him to start being able to wave clear in mid, probably, as effectively, with the, the, the scaling reduction on Q. But overall, this change is the biggest nerf, and this might kind of kill him in AP, just because it, it's like, instead of being six seconds between combos, it's now 10 seconds between combos, you know, your, your windows of intervention are much, much lower and overall it's it's like yeah it's like almost a, a doubling his his co combo cooldown essentially especially in the early mid game it will feel a lot lot worse so this might push quang a bit entirely honestly and he'll just be played purely as an offlaner i think the problem is with quang offlane is it's really boring to play ad quang it's not very interesting at all and i think it doesn't play that well so i think it's kind of a shame but uh maybe ap quang is still fired in the offlane and you just build a bit tankier and play it that way because you can't really play around like the q one shot kind of style anymore uh monox had a traffic damage increased sure I I think traps are cool. Mainly just an early game damage increase. It is only early game. Oh, that's nice. I think the traps did reduce much damage in the early game. Now it feel a bit less bad. Or a bit better for you if your enemy is walking into them or whatever. Or if you get the nice ERMB combo, you get a little bit more burst. Uh, I don't think Murdoch needs a big buff or anything, but sure. I mean, why not? Uh, Sparrow, this is really nice changes. Base damage increased by four. Uh, damage scaling increased by 0.3. Q might be an ability now. 10 to 30, or it's like 10 to 50 to 30 to 70. And Q mana cross massively reduced. This is the biggest issue, I think, is her Q for so bad add on your mana pool just to do basically nothing but now the damage per tick has gone up by quite a bit so you know you read 10 to 30 you think well, that's not that much but actually i think it's five applications of damage so it's actually 50 damage per rank which is actually pretty big every one for four so it's 40 damage per rank uh, it's pretty nice it would actually feel like it's worth pressing now probably could even be maxable this might push her wave clear to a point where i think realistically you'd want to max it to, for the character to feel good because you wanted to be able to just cue the wave and move i think that's how how you want it to feel and this might push it into that range where you could play sparrow max q out wave clear the eddy carry all the time and just rotate or just like wave clear your way through the early game right until you scale um so i could see like a q max build now being a lot more relevant and you just like kind of blow up waves everywhere you know run around jungling and stuff or just power farming it could definitely be playable overall uh micro position cooldown from 18 to 10 to 12 to 8 really really big for like her early game trading and stuff this cooldown is really long in the early game especially because you max it second normally but now if you're really really good and again mana cost decreased from 90 to 130 to 50 again her mana problems in lane were really really problematic i think and I i'm glad to see that they're tackling that to make her feel a lot better in the early game uh and relentless stack duration increased from one second to two seconds to so make her passive feel a lot better you won't feel super pressured to constantly hit the same person like every single second to keep your passive going now you have a bit more leeway on when it's available Overall, I think there's really good Sparrow changes. Could definitely push her to be more played, especially if this Q build, like, works. I think she could definitely just be, like, wave clearing waves, running away. It will let her function a lot better in the early game because she'll just be, like, out clearing her later put all the time, you know? So she could definitely be a lot more serviceable in that regard and maybe even be contesting with your boy Twin Blast and Murdoch. That would be cool because it'd be nice to see Sparrow in the best a bit more because I think she has been kind of out of the limelight just because her kit's been a bit awkward. But yeah, that's been patch 0.5.1 for full. Hope you enjoyed my patch review. Um, yeah, I think it's gonna be a pretty good patch overall. You know, some mid nerfs I think everybody was asking for, some nice AD carry changes. Uh, and I think the new Jar of Hearts is really, really cool. Definitely excited to try some more Decker mid. Make sure you give it a try as well. And yeah, I'll see you guys again for the next patch review in the future. Hope you enjoyed this video and I'll catch you next time. Peace.